Real Virginia is proudly produced by the Virginia Farm Bureau Federation. Since 1926, Farm Bureau has been working to preserve Virginia farms and our rural heritage. Visit our website at VAFB.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Real Virginia, a show about Virginia agriculture and the people who produce the wonderful local products we enjoy. Brought to you by the Virginia Farm Bureau. It's time to tour the Salty Southern Route. We learn how easy it is to raise your own garlic from the ground up. And Madison County is the destination this week for our county agricultural close-up. Welcome back to Real Virginia, everyone. We're here in Madison County at Graves Mountain Lodge. We'll take a closer look at this mountain community in just a few minutes. But first, Dave Miller takes us to a totally different part of the state to get a taste of southeastern Virginia. It pays to get off the highway when traveling through southeastern Virginia. Beautiful views of white cotton, green soybeans, and brown peanut fields compete with towering pines along State Routes 10, 58, and 460. But it's the food that is the real standout along what's come to be called Virginia's Salty Southern Route. This is the only part of the state where peanuts are grown, and it's the heart of the historic pork industry that can trace its roots all the way back to 17th century Virginia. Agriculture and forestry are still vital industries in this region, and Dora Gerganus can tell you a few things about peanuts. Her store is located about halfway between Emporia in Franklin. We farm uh, peanuts, cotton, corn, and soybeans. And then we have the retail store here. This is my 29th year. Um, of course, we mainly have peanuts and are promoting the Virginia Jumbo peanut. And we have them roasted with salt, roasted without. We have them out of the shell cooked, salted, unsalted, candy coated kinds, different kinds, because everybody wants something different, and that's okay too. Gergena says lots of folks stop by her store when they see the pumpkins and produce out front, and they usually also end up buying peanuts. She's always glad to explain how peanuts are grown below the ground level and are technically a legume, not a tree nut. The Salty Southern Route has 18 planned stops in the five Virginia counties where peanuts and pork are king. One key location is Smithfield, home to the world's largest pork producing company. Smithfield Foods. As you'd expect, there's plenty of history and ham products available. Smithfield is just becoming a wonderful place to visit on a, a day in and day out basis, a weekend. We're one of the number one stops uh, as a day trip from Williamsburg. We see a lot of traffic from that and uh, we're, we're literally in the heart of town. So we feel like this has been a great place to kind of show off our, our town. And there are plenty of food options to show off. Uh, we do our own pulled pork. Uh, we make our own uh, butt rub spice blend uh, that we season our, our pork with. We smoke it for about four and a half hours and we finish our pork in the oven so it's nice and tender and, and shreds apart easily. Uh, we do pork tenderloin. Uh, we marinate our pork tenderloin so every single piece is going to have a lot of coverage with beautiful flavor. Uh, we use the same spice rub on our ribs. Uh, they smoke for about two and a half hours. Uh, you may also find treats like our fried green tomatoes. Uh, we make our own batter and fry them. Uh, in between, you'll see a layer of pimento cheese. We make our pimento cheese from scratch. Uh, we make the sweet potato biscuits from scratch. It's uh, one of my homemade recipes. Uh, we feature our Smithfield Genuine Salt Cured Ham. Uh, it's the best around. Country-style salted hams have been a Virginia specialty since the colonial days. It was one of Virginia's most valuable food exports during the centuries before refrigeration. Most visitors want to learn more about how to prepare country ham how long it keeps, and how to cook it. Connie Williams has been selling country hams for a long time and enjoys answering these questions when folks stop by to buy a ham. You have your die-hard ham people. I mean, they know what they want when they come here. They want the uncooked and cook it themselves, and that's a lot of them are sold during holidays because that's like a tradition. And then you have your, uh, your people who are not sure 
and they depend on us to explain because a lot of them have a misconcept that the country ham, like I said, it's sugar in the process when they cure it, and they therefore think it might be sweet, but it is not. It's just that that sugar makes it a little bit more moist and a tad bit less salty. Yeah, we built our, our community, our, our company, uh, on the backs of salt cured hams, and it's been a tradition that's gone as long as I can remember. Uh, my grandfather was a peanut farmer himself, so we ate everything around the table. If he didn't grow it, we didn't eat it. And uh, it just, it kind of brings me back to home. Uh, we would like to drive that sense of hospitality, and we know items as simple as peanuts and salt cured ham are just the thing that bring people to the table. A day spent on the salty southern route is everything pork and peanuts and local produce. Traveling through the southeastern counties and towns is a relaxing and fun way to explore some of Virginia's beauty and bounty. You can learn more about the area and plan your trip by visiting SaltySouthernRoute.com. In Isle of Wight County, this is Dave Miller. Agritourism encompasses everything from a pick-your-own berry patch to a farm brewery or a winery. These businesses generate a lot of extra dollars for rural Virginians, and the Old Dominion has several food and beverage-related travel opportunities. In addition to the salty southern route, there is the Virginia Oyster Trail and the Blue Ridge Fruit Loop. There are about 1,400 farms and agritourism-related establishments in Virginia, and more than half are open year-round. In 2015, visitors to Virginia agritourism sites spent an estimated one and a half billion dollars. Hi, today we're going to be talking about garlic from the ground up. Please stay tuned. Farm Bureau is the insurance provider of choice for farmers, but did you know all Virginians can benefit? In fact, most of our members are not farmers. As a member, you are supporting worthy causes like local Virginia food banks and the Ag in the Classroom program. Your $40 membership will easily pay for itself with the many savings options as well. Farm Bureau is made for Virginians. To learn more about the membership advantage, go to VAFB.com or visit your local Farm Bureau. Like many bulbs, garlic is best planted in the fall in Virginia. Chris Mullins from Virginia Cooperative Extension spoke with an expert on planting garlic in Virginia from the ground up. Hi and welcome. Today we're at Fauquier Educational Farm in Warrington, Virginia, and we're here with Mr. Jim Hankins, the director here. Jim, we're talking about garlic today, and this is something that I know very little about. Tell me about garlic and for the home gardener, maybe. Oh, garlic is just one of the easiest um, crops for a home gardener that you could possibly think of. You know, it is a very close cousin to an onion. Okay. So anybody who is familiar with planting onions, planting onion sets, planting garlic is exactly the same, except for one thing. You want to be sure to plant them in the fall. Okay. Anywhere from about mid-September to mid-November up here in Northern Virginia, you could push it into December down in, down in Tidewater, Virginia. Right, it's a little warmer. But um, you plant it in the fall. It overwinters beautifully. Okay. There aren't any pests. Deer don't bother it. Nothing really bothers it. Wow. And then next June, okay. you'll see the plant start to die back and you'll get really nice big bulbs. That is wonderful. Are there different varieties, different types? What do you have? Well, you can see that these cloves are quite a bit bigger than what most of us are used to getting at the grocery store. Right. The little white garlic that you get at the grocery store is most typically called soft neck garlic. Most of it's grown in the Central Valley of California. And when you break open a clove of, or a bulb of soft neck garlic, you get 15 or 20 hateful little thin um, cloves. Right. This is a hard neck garlic. These are Russian red garlic. Okay. Um, a really cold adapted variety. The soft neck garlic doesn't like Virginia's colder winters. Okay. So the hard neck garlics will do better for us and they will produce really, really big bulbs and cloves. And it's really a great flavorful, hot, spicy garlic. Well, that sounds like a winner for growers in Virginia. Now, where would they find something like this? You know, any of the major seed companies, okay. they they all carry garlic right now, and you know um, they are advertising specials. 
Um, it's it's pretty easy to find online. You're not going to find it at your local feed store. Okay. Look for the hard neck varieties. Okay. Um, and you know one of the nice things. It can be expensive to buy the garlic the first year. Right. But this is one of the easiest crops that there is to save back some of your garlic. You know, the couple of those nice pretty bulbs, store them away in a cool, dark place over the um, summer and plant them again next fall. Okay. Pay for them one time and you'll have a lifetime of garlic. That is great. They said these were easy to plant. How about showing me how to plant them? Oh, absolutely. All right, Jim, let's plant one of these. Uh, this is the easiest thing in the world. Now we're planting into a plastic mulch. Okay. But like I said, it's just like an onion set. You want to look for the bottom of the clove. Okay. And it needs to make a little bit of contact with the soil. You don't even have to completely cover it. As long as the bottom of that clove is making soil contact, and you keep them about six inches apart. Okay. Um, you can crowd them in pretty easily. Yeah, you can put a lot in this yeah, small area. Yeah, we've got area. 50 pounds in this one row. Okay. Well, great. Overall, it sounds like a great crop, even for the home gardener. Absolutely. You know, and you can have garlic for years. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, Jim, thanks for letting us come out and see your garlic production today. Anytime. Well, for more information about growing garlic, contact your local county extension office and talk to a master gardener. For From the Ground Up, I'm Chris Mullins. We'll see you next time. From the Ground Up is presented with the generous advice and assistance of Virginia Cooperative Extension. Visit their website at ext.vt.edu. Grits are a southern staple this time of year. Chef John Maxwell shows us how to add some fall vegetables to create a delicious dish next in the heart of the home. And now, a sneak peek into a day in the life of a Virginia dairy cow. They get their day started. They have some lunch, get some exercise, spend time with their friends, and then end their day with dairy sweet dreams. Real dairy, real life, real delicious. It doesn't get much more Virginia than stone ground grits. Chef John Maxwell mixes in some cheese and some fall broccoli to create a simple yet comforting dish in the heart of the home. Hi, welcome to the heart of the home. I'm John Maxwell and we're here at Meadow Hall in Meadow Event Park where every week we get a chance to play with some great Virginia food. We're going way back this time. We're going all the way to the colonial times with grits. Grits are dried corn that's been soaked in a lye bath to, to take the husk off and swell the, the kernel and then it's dried and ground to make these grits. It's still done the same way it's always been done. These are stone ground grits because they're, gr they're ground with stone wheels. You can get steel cut gr grits but they are very uniform. They make a much smoother porridge but it doesn't have the mouthfeel or the texture of good Virginia uh, stone ground grits. All right, so I've got some stock in here. You can use any stock you want. I'm using a little bit of chicken stock, right? but vegetable stock is really, really good with this. That way you've got a vegetarian kind of thing, or not, veg not vegan because we're using cheese, but, um, but it, it's a good non-meat dish as well. Okay, I'm gonna add the grits. I'm sprinkling them in because I don't want them to lump together. It's not likely that they will, but I like to be careful. And I'm going to stir them fairly consistently until I get a chance, until they start to swell up. Okay, this is cooked for about 10 minutes. It's getting nice and smooth. All right, I may have to add some more stock later on, but I'm going to add some milk now to it. Uh, to let that get absorbed right? and to give it a little creamy texture and if this is enough then I won't add any more stock. And I'll let it simmer and then I'm going to taste it. Right. Yeah, it's going to take a couple more minutes because I still got the little grit to taste, to tooth. 
Okay, when I tasted it, it had plenty of fat and plenty of mouthfeel from the cream, or the milk rather, but I'm gonna add a little bit more stock right, to give it some more flavor. This will get absorbed into the kernels. All right, it's about a three quarters of a cup. When that gets absorbed, this will be ready for the next step. All right, this has got just about the texture I'm looking for. Uh, we're going to need to tighten it up a little bit more after I put the other ingredients in. But this is, it's, we don't want it so thick it holds its shape. We want it just to kind of hold the contrast and the texture. So I'm going to add the butter. All right and stir that around till it melts. That's gonna add fat in here, which is gonna surround most of the grit from the, from the hominy grits and help that tenderize and add that nice mouthfeel that we need. Okay, now we're gonna add some cheese. Virginia's got great dairy. And I'm going to add the broccoli florets. And these are um, florets that are trimmed, blanched in boiling water, and then shocked in ice water to get that good green color. But you can use frozen broccoli florets. It works just as well. It doesn't have that really fresh from the garden taste. But it's in this dish, with all the cheese and the grits, it's, it's going to work really well. There we go. You can see a slight change in the color there as the, the cheddar cheese came through. I like to use a dark plate with something like this that it contrasts well. Right. And, and it goes. Now this is a serving dish. If I happen to be eating at your house, don't put this down on the table because I'll think it's my portion. Right. See you next week at Got Heart of the Home. Join us next week on Heart of the Home, where we get a chance to play with some great Virginia food. Recipes from the Heart of the Home can be found on the Virginia Farm Bureau website at VAFB.com, as well as on Chef Maxwell's website at ChefJohnMaxwell.com. Broccoli is a favorite vegetable among consumers, and a fair amount of it's grown in the mountains of southwest Virginia, where the cooler climate allows growers to extend their season later in the spring and start earlier in the fall. Broccoli is raised on 221 farms in the Old Dominion, and it's sold in local grocery stores or packaged and shipped out of state. Many farmers in southwest Virginia lost significant income when tobacco production declined in recent years, and researchers are continuing to study ways to help them expand their broccoli production to give them more income opportunities. Fall may be the perfect time to visit scenic Madison County, Virginia. As Burke Moeller reports in this week's County Agricultural Close-Up, Madison County farmers stay busy year-round. Located on the eastern side of the Blue Ridge Mountains, Madison County is 322 square miles in size. It boasts a scenic combination of high mountains and lush pastures that provide a welcome environment for agriculture. The county was granted a charter in 1792 and named for the Madison family that owned property along the Rapidan River. Yes, that Madison family, which produced our fourth president, James Madison, even though his estate, Montpelier, is in nearby Orange County. Agriculture has been a dominant force in the county since it was founded. It's probably one of the leading revenue generators for the county, also one of the leading employers when you put all the Madison agriculture together. So it's a vibrant, strong business uh, for the county. Madison County has a total of 533 farms spread out over 106,908 acres. The market value for all products sold is $28.4 million. The crop sector of Madison County generated a total of $11.2 million in 2017. Grains and beans accounted for $7.8 million, while hay and other crops brought in $1.9 million. Apples and other fruits were worth $579,000, and nursery and greenhouse products produced $689,000. 
The market value of all livestock sold in Madison County that year was $17.1 million. The largest part of that came from the sale of cattle and calves at $13.6 million. Poultry and hogs made up the rest. Like many rural counties near northern Virginia, Madison County has been affected by suburban growth. Unlike some other exurban counties, Madison has taken steps to preserve its strong agricultural economy through strict zoning regulations. Madison government, we have a four and ten rule, so you can only subdivide it four lots per ten years um, with minimal acreage sizes on lots. It just keeps us rural and keeps us kind of a special kind of island is what we are. The decision to keep the county rural is also supporting agriculture in other ways. Young people are looking at agriculture as a career choice, whether they grew up on a farm or not. We start an educational process and a training process to get our youth involved in learning and appreciation and being aware of agriculture. And that transforms into uh, students that graduate that have a desire to seek careers in agriculture. At age 28, David Falk is one of those young farmers. He's built a career in agriculture. You know, it has its good days and it has its bad days, but, um, you know, I like, you know, working with the animals. I like being outside, like being able to work with my father and, um, you know, you feel like you're, you know, impacting the world as well, too. You know, um, you know, you go to the grocery store and buy beef and, you know, you walk in there and you can kind of feel proud and think, hey, you know, this could be some of, you know, some of the food that I'm providing for this world. Falk and his wife, Caitlin, opened Renback Barn on their property. It's an example of the way many farmers, young and old, are using their property for more than strictly agriculture to help them remain profitable. The land next to the barn can be used for weddings and other outdoor activities, while the barn itself is suitable for receptions, holiday parties, even monthly gatherings of local Virginia Farm Bureau members. Lucky Graves can trace his family roots in Virginia to Jamestown. His ancestors relocated to Madison County five generations ago. He says the topography is well suited to raising cattle. Like this land that we're on right now, it looks kind of flat. But if you really went out through the field, you would see all these rocks sticking up. There is a lot of rock here, so that's why we put cattle on them, because they can eat in the field instead of running a disc bind or a disc or something like that over the ground. And that's what happens in the county. We have a lot of hills, so that's why you'll see cattle on a lot of hills where you can't really farm it. Uh, instead of putting a plateau in to actually be able to farm it, that's why it's a lot of cattle here. One of the highlights of the Madison County calendar is the annual Graves Mountain Apple Harvest Festival. I'm here for day two of the event. Day one brought in 15,000 visitors. The Apple Harvest Festival features food, fun, and live music. And of course, there are plenty of apples for the picking from the regionally famous Graves Mountain Orchards. Mazes, bounce houses, pumpkins, and other gourds are everywhere you look. The people of Madison County have succeeded in keeping agriculture a big part of the economic and cultural mix, and they've kept many younger residents interested in the opportunities farming offers for their future. In Madison County, Virginia, I'm Burke Moeller reporting. We're so glad you could join us this week to celebrate all the bounty Virginia has to offer. From the kitchen, to your home and garden, to our wide open spaces, we are proud to say that this is Real Virginia. For all of us from the Virginia Farm Bureau, thanks for watching. Make it a great week. Chesapeake Bay, Atlantic to Appalachia, home in my heart, oh.